good to meet you guys. Welcome to another vlog by yours truly, Rachel Northcott. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, yes, I am alive. I'm not dead. I didn't stop making vlogs or anything, so I'm making one today because I have all the time in the world today and it's Friday. <laughs> Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Party and party and yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that it's Friday. It's the weekend and I'm I'm sure everyone's really happy about the weekend and school's getting closer to finishing so I'm really excited. And yeah. Anyway, I should continue on my video. Now, um Today's video, I ha sort of came up with an idea. I was planning to film one on Tuesday, but I got quite busy with um, other schoolwork. But this idea, I felt like I really wanted to open up to you more. More serious-wise, comedy-wise, all that different kind of stuff that's pretty much happened in my whole entire life. So, this video is about, I can't believe I'm doing this, confessions. Yep. Confessions. Pretty much when I'll be telling everything about myself, everything that I've done, if you guys probably don't know. If you guys did know about it, then I'm really sorry if it's not a confession to you guys. But anyone that's else is not watching, this is a confession and I feel guilty about some of them. Others, I just, I'm just gonna tell you. This confession was really, really, really hard to admit to you guys and I have no idea how I'm going to approach this but I'm just going to say it. The truth is, I don't know how to say this, the truth is I'm not a blonde. Okay, when I was younger I was blonde, I really really had blonde hair but I'm not blonde anymore. Like it may look like that I'm blonde but it's only the highlights in my hair. So if you actually met me in real life, my hair is quite dark. Like, I don't know if you can see, but it is brown. Like, that's brown. Like, brown, like my eyebrows brown. So it's so sad that I'm not blonde. I'm a brunette and I can't have fun anymore. Because blondes have more fun than brunettes and I can't have any fun anymore. My next confession is that I stole something when I was a child and it was the most ridiculous thing that I ever stole in my entire life. This was when I was quite younger. I didn't understand the meaning of stealing. I just thought that my mom gave me this understanding of borrowing. So one day we went to this place called Kmart or I think it was Target and I really, really, really wanted this book and I was quite surprised and like thinking about it now because I don't read books. I hate books. I just, I cannot understand them. Well, well, I just can't read. Like if there's a movie and a book, I just see the movie because it is just easier and it just takes less of my time instead of reading a novel that takes me like a year to read it. I think I was about eight or nine, but anyway, we, I walked into the shop with my mum and at the time I was really, really obsessed with Toy Story. I used to carry this big gigantic Woody doll all around and it had the little hat and it had the little gun and shoes and everything and it even had like Andy written at the bottom of the shoe. So I was walking down one of the aisles and I came to notice and I stumbled upon this book and I really, 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 really love this book. It was a little picture book of Beauty and the Beast. It was only about maybe that size. It was really small. I don't even know why I made a really, really big deal about it. But for some reason, some of my instincts said to me that just, I want it so badly. So the definition of borrowing came into my head. And I just thought if I borrowed this book once I finished it and returned it, It'd be fine. It wasn't fine at all. The way how I got away with it is because since I was carrying a really, really big Woody doll, it came with a hat and you could take the hat off. And because the book was quite small as well, what I did was, I was as I was carrying the actual doll, I took off the hat and sort of, like in my arms, carrying the hat and slid the book inside. So I had it along my chest like this, sort of walking around. It was really, really weird just carrying a, like, a book and a doll like that. So yeah, 
I somehow managed to walk out of the shop. I had no idea. My mom thought I was quite suspicious. She like because she she really really wanted to hold my hand. And one bad had um, a plastic bag, and the other hand had obviously the doll. And my mom was like, Rachel, give me your hand. And I was like, eh, no. And I dropped it. And she never seen that book before and she, until she realized that I stole it. Yes, I thought I was so innocent when I was a child until I found this out. And I'm like, I'm a criminal. <laughs> send me to jail. Just do it. Just send me to jail. Another confession that, I don't know, I guess some people might know, but a lot of people don't because I'm sort of a little bit embarrassed to say it. But hopefully you guys out there are sort of in the same boat as me and share the same interest. But it's a bit hard to say. I love Disney. Like, I don't love Disney. I love, love Disney. Like, if you told me an old classic Disney film, I would tell you what every little aspect that goes a lot, like goes on in the film. I can tell you the characters' names, I can tell you the plot, I can tell you anything in the entire planet. And would you like me to support this argument? Because I have evidence for the first time that no one has ever seen this before. I have evidence to show you how much I love Disney and it is so bad. And I just can't believe I'm telling this to anyone. But hey, this is a confession video, so I'm going to show it. Here it is! Here's my Disney vault. I got this a few years ago for my, my birthday. Um, I think it might have been my 16th birthday. The reason why my mum got this and I really really loved it so much is because I grew up with Disney and the reason why I really wanted this is because when I got older a lot of the younger generation didn't really know the old classic films of Disney. So I just had this really really cute little moment so when I grow up and when I have kids I've got something to show to my kids from you know when I was younger and sort of share the films that I experience and hopefully my kids if I have any <laughs> experience as well. So it's just this big book pretty much like it I, I don't want to write in it because I just don't. It has The Lion King, it's got Beauty and the Beast, it's my favorite movie. Um, Bambi, um, these are ones that I've sort of been collecting, sort of, I know guys, it's so bad, but I love like this kind of cute little stuff because I don't know why. <laughs> like a lot of people call me cute and I don't understand that kind of thing. Like, I don't know what I do. Is it something that I do with my hair? Is it the way I smile? Like, I don't understand how I can be cute. And I'm 18 years old, so I don't know what I'm doing that makes me cute. Is it just the way my personality is? Or is it the way that I love Disney? Is it this and that? I don't know. But, guys, I've got enough evidence to show you that I love Disney and... I love Disney. <laughs> this one other confession that I've had an argument with one of my best friends when I was little. Um, it's quite an embarrassing one. A, a lot of people know it at my school now, but I don't think you guys know about it. But I thought Nemo from Finding Nemo was real. Now me being this really, really gullible blonde, I just thought that Pixar did a really, really amazing job. And I don't know why, I just thought that Nemo was real, and I was like, oh my god, Nemo is real, Nemo is real. And Allison just had this huge debate with me saying, Nemo is not real, wake up to yourself, it's just a cartoon. And I was just, no, I could not take no for an answer that Nemo was not real. So I remember clearly, because <laughs> I have such a good memory, that every single night I would go home, go on Google and search up for any evidence whatsoever to support my argument. Sure, I understand that it's a cartoon and it's not real, but what I was trying to say that the actual fish Nemo was real. So I came upon this website saying that how they came up with the whole story and the director and the writer of the film actually has a clownfish called Nemo and that's how they came up with the name. You know what? I was right the whole time. Nemo is real and it's not based on a true story, but it's based on a true fish that he owned. So, case closed. But then again, from other people's perspectives, I understand why people think I thought I was crazy saying Nemo's not real, you're a cartoon, you're blonde, all that kind of stuff. 
But I was sort of on the right track that N Nemo is an actual fish base by the director. I also have like this other little weird kind of confession thing. Um, I can only eat biscuits a certain kind of way. Like the kind of biscuits that have cream in the middle. So it's like two biscuits and then the cream. I don't know why, but I just have this thing where I cannot eat it straight away. I have to break it apart, like pull it out. So it's like a wagon wheel, for example. Like if you hand me a wagon wheel, I will not eat it until I actually break it in half and I eat it like that. It's with every biscuit. Oreos, wagon wheels, shortbread ones, Monte Carlos, every single biscuit like that has cream in it. I don't know why. I grew up with it and I... People think it's really weird, kind of an 18 year old to split in half her biscuits just to eat it like that instead of eating straight away. But yeah, it's kind of weird for some people to sort of think that, but um, yeah. <laughs> and my final confession for this video is da -da 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 -da. when I was younger, I thought I could talk to animals. Probably a common one with everyone that were in their childhood, but yes, I used to talk to my animals when I was little. And by me sort of like making barking noises and meowing noises, I really thought that they could understand me. Like, there was this one stage with my old dog, Anya, I started barking at her, I think I was maybe four or five years old. I barked at her, and she actually barked back. And I was so surprised. That was the actual moment when I was like, oh my god, my dog replied to me. That means... I can understand animals and they can understand me. So I went through this whole phase from kin no, so from preschool to maybe year two, I thought I could talk to animals. So if I saw like a bird or a pigeon, I would just make bird noises and if I saw a fish, which I do have fish, but don't worry guys, don't be scared, I don't talk to animals anymore. <laughs> Instead, I have the most cutest cat on the whole entire planet. Hello retard. Hey. Does that have camera? Oh my god, you're so adorable! <laughs> he, um, uh, he pokes his tongue out. This is Chino, everybody, in case you don't know. You might have seen him in my previous videos, but he's the most retarded cat ever, and I love him to bits. <laughs> Anyway, that's what I have time for you today. I really, really hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hopefully now I will be able to make more videos, but for now um, I will sort of just be making one or two videos a week. It just depends on my schedule that's sort of going about, but yeah, I really, really hope things work out and I can sort of get more views. And my phone just went off and I have no idea who just sent me a message. It might have been Sam, so um... I should go back talking to him and quickly wrap up this vlog and finish it. <laughs> so yeah, it was really, really great talking to you guys. So wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And I shall... I shall... I can never get that right. I shall see you beautiful people another time. So, alright, see you guys. Bye.